Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Danielle. I am so excited to be doing this. This would be my knitting podcast episode one and I just kind of wanted to take this time to introduce myself, talk about my um, relationship with crafting, especially like knitting and crochet and just kind of get into that. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started with that. Um, I am 32 years old, I am married. I have been knitting slash crocheting off and on for the last, I wanna say it's like 10 to 15 years, somewhere in there. I've been doing this for a very long time but with huge gaps in between. I would say that I am an intermediate beginner there are a lot of things that I know about knitting and then there are a lot of things that I'm still learning. I am very good at the stockinette stitch. I can read a pattern, so intermediate beginner is where I kind of rest. Um, some of the things I enjoy making would have to be more like home decor stuff, afghans, wall hangings. I just like making them, especially a wall hanging because then I can try my hand at some new stitches and things like that. So it's, it's fun for me to do. I learned how to knit because I was working at Joann Fabrics and I was in charge of doing all the demonstrations and we had those, you know those scarves that spiral and like have lacy? I had to demonstrate one of those. Did not know how to knit. Couldn't even do a knit stitch to save my life. Had to have one of the uh, managers show me how to knit and I did the demonstration next day knit it, did totally fine, showed people how to do it, sold a lot of those scarves, and from there I was just off knitting. Um, I learned how to crochet from my mother, so she she taught me how to crochet. Um, I It was kind of tricky because she's left-handed and I'm right-handed, so it was kind of an interesting way to learn, but it was more she taught me kind of the basic, like how to chain and a single crochet, and then I used YouTube to learn a lot more. I do not know how to read a crochet pattern. I'm working on that. <laughs> it is not a skill set I've acquired. I am very good at reading knitting patterns. I can walk anyone through a knitting pattern. I can read my own knitting. I can read other people's knitting, things like that. Like that part, I'm very confident about because I don't know, it was just like I just took up knitting and went with it <laughs> type of a thing. Crochet is more if, if I'm bored or I'm wanting to make like a dishcloth type of a thing. That's kind of what I do with crochet. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I will let you know this video might be a little haphazard. It has been a long time since I've done anything YouTube related. I used to run a um, makeup channel of all things and here I am on the knitting side. And it wasn't something I was expecting to do, but the more I started watching knitting podcasts and things like that, you know, I was like, hey, this might keep me on track with a lot of my projects. So that's really kind of why I've started this. I've also wanted to kind of gather a community of fellow knitters and crocheters and just people who love yarn because I have this whole wall of yarn <laughs> behind me because I have been collecting it. Uh, yeah. So with that, we're going to go ahead and just jump into the typical kind of standard form of a knitting slash crochet podcast. And we're going to talk about what my current whips are. I do want to preface this with I tend to start a lot of projects all at once. It is a problem. I usually have quite a few whips going. This time I only have two and that is going to be a good thing because maybe I'll actually finish them before I start something else. Uh, so the first one is this kind of throw like blanket slash afghan. I don't know what you want to call it. I just pulled a bunch of stitches out of it um, that I'm working on for my couch that I'm supposed to hopefully be getting soon. Um, Hold on, I just need to fix this stitch really quick. Okay, we're good. So, I have it on um, circular needles just because that is kind of my preference. I love knitting on circular needles. I don't often knit in the round, 
but I do knit a lot of things on circulars and these are knit pick me knit picks needles and I absolutely love them um, this is just knit stitch over and over again with different stripes and doing different sizes and different colors this is just acrylic yarn that's like kind of another thing is I tend to be on the more affordable side of yarn shopping occasionally I will splurge and buy something a little more expensive but typically it's acrylic yarns or things that I can find at Joann's Michael's Hobby Lobby things like that um, just because financially <laughs> getting like a hundred dollars worth of yarn for a project isn't always something I'm able to do and I tend to make a lot of like home decor and I don't know acrylic just seems to work better for that so that's kind of where I'm at with that I do make clothing items occasionally but anyway back to what I'm working on um, I'm just kind of wanting this to be a throw size nothing too too big I just want it to be there because occasionally I do like to use a blanket and I also um, wanted to tie in some of the colors I have in other rooms into my front living room um, space so yeah um, with this I'm using a bunch of different things I'm using a I love this yarn I'm using red heart I'm using um, lion brand basic stitch I just have a lot going on in this a lot of it is scraps that I've had or balls of yarn that have just been sitting there that I was like I need to figure out something to do with this which is kind of something that I'm trying to do is where I'm using what's in my collection before I just kind of start anything else um, or purchase anything else I'm not saying that I'm never going to purchase yarn that is a big fat lie if I've ever heard one I will probably be purchasing yarn I can't lie about that I love buying yarn I love touching yarn I love looking at yarn I mean I do have some more like more pricey yarn to me it's not like the most expensive this is knit picks hawthorne fingering weight um i'm planning on making a cardigan out of it so don't don't think that i won't buy yarn i definitely will buy yarn but i kind of wait until there's a sale or i have the budget to purchase it i just don't um go out and just buy cords of yarn even though it probably looks that way because i mean kind of <laughs> I I do have a yarn addiction issue but I feel like this is the side of YouTube to have that on so I think I'm in good company let me know in the comments down below if I'm in good company okay so the other thing that I'm working on is I am making this cardigan and there's no pattern I'm just kind of winging it that's something else I do I tend to wing a lot of things or I tend to kind of be like well I can make that or I can construct that but this is going to be an oversized cardi I have the back panel done and then I have one of the front panels done um, and this is red heart what is this hold on I have it right here <laughs> as I yank 9,000 balls of yarn off. <sighs> what is this? Oh, this is the Red Heart Neon Stripes that I'm using. I saw this yarn and I was like, I have to make a cardigan out of it. And I am going to soften um, the Red Heart yarn because, you know, it's Red Heart, it's itchy, it's scratchy. Um, but I do kind of like the style of this and kind of the neon. I am... I tend to be a very colorful person and I love color and I love playing with color. Um, I, I think that comes from my makeup style. If you can't tell the hot pink lip, I mean, <laughs> come on. Uh, so it kind of fed into my like yarn collecting habit. So I'm trying to kind of figure out what I want to do with these bright colors. I know my afghan is not super bright colors, but a lot of what I make to wear is. Um, so yeah so I don't currently have any finished objects but I can show you a couple of finished objects and kind of things that I like to make um, and talk about kind of my process a little bit so I'll show you some past uh, finished objects give me one second let me grab those okay I'm back let's go ahead and talk about some of the things I've made in the past so the first one that I absolutely love and this will kind of give you my like knitting journey in a nutshell because this is my very first sweater so don't judge it too hard um yeah 
Uh, I made this last year for the first time. So this is my Weasley sweater. I made it. I did the duplicate stitch on top to create the letter because I have yet to master like intarsia or any of like the color change kind of patterns. So I did that, but I really do like this sweater. It's comfortable. It's made out of big twist yarn. It's actually very soft and super warm. So another thing you should probably know, and this might be why I don't make as many garments is I live in Arizona, so it's really warm. So I probably get to wear like sweaters and hoodies a couple times out of the year, although I am notorious for wearing sweaters and hoodies throughout the summer when I'm inside my own house and have the air conditioning on because I like to freeze myself out. It's just, that's just how that is. <laughs> so, but this is my first ever sweater. I made it. I'm actually, um, I have an unfinished object, a UFO of this same sweater for my husband that I've just kind of given up on making right now because I, I don't even know where it is. We just moved and it's somewhere in a box still. I should probably find that so I can finish it at some point, maybe later. I'll talk about that later. But this is from the Harry Potter Knitting Magic book. Um, this pattern was actually really simple and I'm glad for my first sweater I didn't do something in the round. Like this was all having to be pieced together. Uh, I really kind of like that because then I could make changes as I go. I felt a little bit easier than um, if I knit it in the round, if that makes sense. Like I had to shorten the sleeves a bit and I had, there were some other things that I did. Like I think I added a couple of rows. I don't know. I played around with it a bit, which I'm going to be real. I'm notorious for doing. I don't always follow the pattern to a T. If I figure out something that's going to work better for the fit of my body, I will do something different. Um, this, I just kind of, I actually, it's not as long as what the pattern originally called for I shortened it a bit and I did uh, things a little bit differently here and there just because this is my style I don't know <laughs> I don't know how else to say that it's just it it fits me better with the changes I've made and part of me wishes that as I was working on this I had made notes in my book I think I made a couple of notes on the sleeves because I went for the smaller sleeve size than the size of the body of the sweater and things like that. I don't know. I mean, that's that's a normal change a lot of people make with sweaters. But um, some of the other things I did, like taking in the sides, because I didn't want it to be like this big boxy sweater. I wanted it to be a little bit more narrow and it is, it's not as narrow as I kind of would have liked it, but hey, you know, I'm not like skinny mini or anything. So there's that. So yeah, that was my first sweater. Uh, I really, really liked how that turned out. It really, um, it, it was really fun to make. And I, I made it fairly quickly because I was super excited about making it and being able to wear it. And I wore it a lot last winter. The next thing, this is a more recent um, finished object. And this is kind of my like high low um drop stitch top you can kind of see it better this way this is with one of the karen um skinny cakes can't really remember which one and i actually think i have it inside out i do um <laughs> i showed it to you inside out because yeah um good job but this is what it looks like it's oversized it does hang off the shoulder um i wear it with like a t-shirt or something under it because that's just me but this is one where i combine like three different patterns which is crazy i know it, it's insane <laughs> but it was more like i found certain things i liked in one pattern and just kind of combine them all and if i can remember which patterns i used i will link them down below I should probably also preface this with I am horrible at using Ravelry. I I don't know. It's just not my thing and <laughs> I need to get better at that. So encourage me in the comments to get better at Ravelry. I'll look up patterns and things but and like get ideas but I'm notorious for not using that appropriately. But anyway, I like this short sleeve, um, lighter weight, 
not as warm as like the sweater so I can kind of wear it in different parts of the year. A couple of other types of things that I like to make are shawls. This is an asymmetrical shawl and it's out of another um, Caron skinny cake. I believe this is like melon something, but I like it because it can be worn like a shawl or you can wear it like a scarf. It, it just kind of really depends on how you're feeling that day. Like you can actually put it around and have it nicely around things like that. I don't know. It just makes me happy and I was having fun because this I was learning or I was kind of playing with the edging on this and I'll show you what I mean. Um, it has kind of these points and I was playing with that and just getting a better feel of how to kind of do different edgings and things. This was one that I believe the pattern came on one of the no, the pattern came on a red heart skein that I had and I just kind of went with it and used the Simply Soft and made adjustments and played around with how wide or how narrow I wanted certain points. So yeah, cause it starts off super, super tiny like that. And then it expands. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but it expands to that. So yeah, I really like the colors of this. It's very, it's very me, it's very pretty, and it just, it it makes me happy and it's something that I look forward to actually using as a scarf or a shawl, however I decide to wear it and style it. So the next thing I'm going to show is 1000% my creation. Um, this is a shawl that I made. I like it because it looks like butterfly wings. It is very, very pretty. This was out of a mandala yarn. I think it was the Sphinx one. I'm not 100% sure. I'll try and remember what it was. But this is one that I actually wrote this pattern out and I need to re-knit it and probably find some people to test it to make sure that it is actually going to work the way I wanted it to. It's not something that I'm planning on charging people for. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what I end up doing with that pattern, depending on how it goes and, and things like that. But this was fun because I learned how to do a Pico bind off on this. And I like to use shawls and wall hangings um, to kind of learn new stitches, learn new techniques, play around with shaping, things like that, just because it's a little bit easier like this has a lot of ruffled detail and I did that on purpose. I wanted it to have a lot of texture and it's just, I don't know, it's it's so fun. I love it. So it's one of my favorites that I've made and one that I do plan on actually wearing and I like how it looks in the back because it just kind of gives this ruffled shape. Kind of like it is, it's doing up at the front here, but yeah, this is a favorite of mine and I believe I just called it the Sphinx Shawl because that's what it was called, um, the color of the yarn was called, and I just kind of went with that. So, yeah. So that's kind of an example of things that I like to knit and create. <laughs> I, I tend to go in, in very diverse ways. It just kind of depends on if a project catches my eye. And um, I tend to collect yarn and then find projects that work for it later. That's just kind of my style of buying yarn, my style of knitting, my style of crochet and things like that. Um, I also recently have started learning how to uh, Tunisian crochet, which has been fun. I've made a few dish towels and things like that. Um, and I, I have another one I'm working on and I don't know where it went. I started it and it disappeared because that's how my life goes. <laughs> Um, typically in these videos they talk about new things that they've acquired. I haven't really acquired anything new. Um, I mean I could say that the nitpick stuff I acquired is new. It is the newest yarn in my yarn collection uh, but it's not really that new. Um, something I want to do is talk about projects that I want to start with some yarn that I have and this is more just to kind of hopefully remind me in the future inspire you guys um, so I'm going to do that I'm going to take a couple of different things and talk about projects I want to start but my goal is to finish the two projects I have going right now and possibly find that sweater I'm supposed to make for my husband it's somewhere I don't know where it is 
anyway so let me grab a couple of things and we'll talk about what i'm wanting to create with them okay i'm back i grabbed some stuff off of my shelves i only grabbed a couple of things because i'm going to try my best not to start like eight thousand projects at once i'm not going to make any promises i'm just not it's it, i'm not <laughs> Okay, so the first thing here I have is the brunette baby velvet and I've been looking at these velvet yarns for a very very long time and I believe I got this from Hirschner's. Um, it's a medium floor weight. It's 100% polyester and I want to make a cardigan out of it. I know a lot of people are making baby blankets and things like that but I, I, I saw this and I touched it and I was like it needs to be a cardigan. I don't know. I just I, I see things in my mind and I have to make them and that's kind of where I'm at with this is I have to make this it, it needs to be a cardigan there are no other options for this right now I have four skeins of this which is probably overkill I probably didn't need four skeins it is almost 500 yards in each skein and typically I can get away with a sweat like a cardigan um, depending on how long I want it but I'm thinking I want this to be long I don't know should I have it like waist length or should I have it like cover my butt I don't know let me know in the comments if I should make this a super super long cardigan or like a shorter cardigan I don't know I just I, I have four skeins of it so it could possibly go either way and they're all in this blue color because I saw it and I was like uh no that needs to be mine and a cardigan so there's that yeah I have problems and I like to make cardigans or at least I like to start them. I, I think I've only finished one cardigan and it was a crochet cardigan, which you'll see me wear occasionally on here. It's super fuzzy. It's made out of this, the Karen, Karen latte cake. Uh, not this color, but a different color. It's like the gray green uh, color. Okay. That's enough of me just rambling. I, I'm going to apologize again because this video is going to be me just like word vomiting the whole time <laughs> and it's more because i have not been on camera in a very long time i think i've said that but anyway anyway i digress let's get into the next thing that i want to make so i have several of these skeins and i got them from Hirschner's. i also have them in where is it i also have them in orange and i'm probably going to make a cardigan out of this i have no idea what i'm going to do with the orange one i might make hats and um donate them or something like baby hats because it's super soft um i don't think this is 100 percent acrylic it was again from Hirschner's, and it was their um mill ends i just was like you know let's see what i get and holy crap did i get a ton of yarn a ton of blue and orange yarn a lot of blue and orange yarn so much blue and orange yarn um so i'm probably gonna make baby hats or something out of the orange or like just hats i can give away to people out of the orange i don't know how many people want an orange hat i also have dabbled with the idea of making myself a very orange and black striped halloween sweater so that might happen with that but this i'm going to make a cardigan because a basic blue cardigan will make me very happy and i will probably wear it frequently i wear cardigans a lot which you wouldn't know that because I'm not wearing one right now. <laughs> okay, that's enough of me rambling. Um, I'm my goal is to post once a week, probably on Saturdays, um, just because that's going to be easy because I'll have Wednesdays to film and Saturdays to upload. And that schedule will also give me time to work on projects, collect things, talk about different things, and hopefully my videos will be between the 30 minute and an hour mark. I don't want them to be super, super long, but I also don't want them to be super short. So that's kind of my goal there. I also feel like it'll get easier <laughs> to do this once I sit in front of the camera more and once I really get working on projects and start talking about different patterns I'm working on, different kind of knitting things that I like. If you guys have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them in an upcoming video or just 
chat with you in the comments. If you guys could like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it, especially if you want to see how my knitting projects go and what I create in the future. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me through this very first video. I know it's probably not going to be a half an hour long and I'm probably just rambling, but I really do appreciate you stopping by for my very first knitting podcast. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day, night, wherever you are, and bye!